Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. You got to help my memory here. I, I, I seem to remember a challenge match that you played against John McEnroe in Vancouver back in, in, in the 80s. Have, have I got that right? And, and if so, what are your memories of Vancouver? What, what do you know about our city? Well, first of all, I've been here two or three times before. Uh, I arrived uh, Friday afternoon with my wife, and we had two, three beautiful days in Vancouver. Really enjoyed the city, so we, we have a lot of fun. Regarding the match with John McEnroe in the 80s, I'm not sure. I don't remember either, but I, I remember one thing. I played Ivan Lendl one exhibition here in Vancouver many, many years ago. Regarding John, I'm not so sure. What was your relationship uh, like with John back then? Uh, and not just the 80s, but going back to the 70s. What was your relationship like with him back then? You were competitors. What's it like now? Well, we, uh, we both uh, love to win and hate to lose, both of us. Um, if we put it this way, today we're very good friends, me and John. We keep in touch a lot, call each other, see each other's families. And uh, that's a good opportunity to see see each other here in Vancouver. We we'll played uh, the, the Labor Cup, so that's going to be great. In the seventies, uh, big rivalry between me, between me and John. We had a lot of great matches, and people really enjoyed watching both me and John because we had different styles. And uh, I think the most re- memorable match was at the nineteen eighties Wimbledon final. Yeah. That was a great match, and. Uh, I think the people really enjoy both of us as as not as tennis player, but even as persons. They respect us, what we did on the tennis court and what we did uh, off the tennis court. You were uh, a stoic. Uh, John uh, let his temper fly. Did you realize at the time how good that was for for tennis? The contrast in personalities between the two of you. I think it was good for tennis, but not maybe for the tennis players when they played John, because he was very irritating on the tennis court. But it was good for tennis in general, because you could see different styles. So yeah. that was great. Yeah. Uh, when he played me, he never said anything. He, he, he was behaving perfectly. So uh, that's a good thing. But for, for tennis in general, John was uh, an unbelievable personality. He is even today, even if he doesn't play. But during that time, it was good to have John in, in the tennis. Okay, so Bjorn, what's your opinion of the 2017? I thought it was pretty good, 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. Your opinion of the 2017 movie, uh, Borg versus uh, McEnroe, um, and, and the job done by the actors who played you guys? Yeah, the actors was, uh, you know, I loved the movie a lot because it was a great movie because I won the match, so of course. <laughs> <laughs> but... But the a- actor and actresses was one of the most uh, uh, famous in Sweden. So the whole thing was very well done. Uh, but the, the problem was that maybe not me and uh, John was involved from the beginning in the movie. I mean, if we had been involved, I think the movie had to be a different movie in that kind of way. But we was not involved. But in, in general, I think it was a nice movie anyway. I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, I, I talked to John a lot about it, and he didn't like the movie because he lost the final. But I'm, I'm joking again. But there, it was a good, good movie. We enjoyed it, both of us. Definitely, yes. Bjorn, you're a big part of my childhood. Uh, the five consecutive, uh, the Sundays, Wimbledon. Talk about that incredible run because nobody had won five straight Wimbledon since uh, 1906. I think, you know, you dream as as uh, as a youngster, you know, when you start to play tennis, you set up your goals. I mean, I had I had a goal when I was like 11, 12 years old. I said maybe one one day I could play uh, at the Wimbledon Centre Court. I mean, that was one of my dreams, and uh, that dream came through uh, 1973. So that was a big thing. And maybe you put a, ne- a next goal, and then maybe you could do well at Wimbledon. And 1976, when I won Wimbledon for the first time, that was a huge thing for me because my, my, my dream came through. And then four more times, I won five times Wimbledon. And um, that was incredible. And, uh, you know, looking back, 
uh, those uh, five victories, it's very difficult to understand what what I achieved for, for me as a person. But I'm, you know, I'm very happy what I did, and you know, what tennis gave me as 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 a tennis player, and the world what what they gave me too, because. I mean, tennis is such a global sport and one of the biggest sports in the world. And to to be part of that, it's a, it's a great thing. And even today, to be part of tennis, to be part of uh, of Labour Cup, to be the captain of Team Europe, it's, it's it's a huge thing and it's a big thing for me. Bjorn, uh, how has tennis changed uh, from the days when you dominated? What are you seeing different, uh, even with the kids growing up and the way they're being taught? You know, the tennis today, it's, it's a completely different uh, sport than when we played. I mean, easy to say that the, the guys today, they hit the ball so much harder than we did. I mean, that's basically that. And another thing is that there's more players today. The competition is tougher and you have more countries playing than we did. I mean, those three things are main things. I mean, to play well enough competition, I mean, top 10, how we played, I mean, we played great tennis too, but that's the difference where if you compare the tennis today compared to tennis when me and John played, for instance. Okay, Bjorn, we talked earlier about uh, being in Vancouver, and in Vancouver, the team everybody talks about is the local hockey team, the Canucks. A long history of Swedish players have played for the Vancouver Canucks. Daniel and Henrik Sedin, I don't know if you know any of these people, Matthias, Matthias Olin, Alex Edler, um, did did you play hockey at all growing up? Uh, that was my uh, one. That's my favorite sports, actually. <laughs> uh, tennis and ice hockey is two, two, two sports I really enjoyed. Ice hockey I've been following for so many years. I played a lot of ice hockey as a junior. Canucks I've been following. Matthias Helland, I was out with him like uh, six months ago. We went, went, went out for, for lunch in Stockholm. I followed the Sedin brothers and all the Swedish players has been p- playing in the Canucks so that's one of my favorite teams because b- w- with all the Swedes been playing all over the years so I- I'm still going to follow them you still have some Swedes in the in the team so it's definitely one of my, my favorite teams. How good were you Bjorn at hockey? Uh, <laughs> I was not bad I was okay I mean it's uh, if I would not play tennis I would definitely play uh, ice hockey because I played a lot of ice hockey as a junior uh, so the I was one stage I was choosing between tennis and ice hockey. If, if uh, uh, but uh, I think I choose maybe the right thing. But uh, <laughs> but ice hockey, it's, you know, it, it's a, such a great sport. And uh, like I said before, I'm, I'm still following the game. Lace them up, Bjorn. I think the Canucks could use you right now. Trust me. Oh yeah, hey, hey, Bjorn. What what are you up to these <laughs> What are you up to these days? What what takes up your time these days for people who don't know? Well, involved with tennis, uh, especially a big thing, Labour Cup, uh, you know, with a place to, to, to be part of the, the tennis, to speak to these uh, great champions who, who, who's playing tennis today. That's a great thing. But basically involved with tennis. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to still be involved with tennis. I have a family, great family with two kids. One, one son is, is, is playing tennis. He played Davis Cup in, in mm. Italy for Sweden. He's 20 years old, so he wants to be become a great player. I have another son who is involved with business in Sweden, so we have a close uh, relationship and we spend a lot of time together, so that's very nice. Uh, one more, Bjorn, if, if you don't mind. When it comes to the Laver Cup, wh- what are your memories of Rod Laver, uh, the, the, the great Rod Laver as a, as a tennis player and what he meant to the sport? Well, Rod, one of the greats in tennis, won two Grand Slams, won the four uh, Slams uh, in one year, and that's very difficult to do. He was my idol when I grew up because I wanted to, to, to play and, and uh, behave like he did on the tennis court. And then I had the, the, the chance to play him many times. The first time I played him was in the final in, in Houston, Texas. I lost that final. Then we played some other mm-hmm. times and I, I beat him. But to, to be part, to, to talk to him, his generation, what he, you know, what he did, what he um, discovered in tennis, that's, that's unbelievable. But Rod Laver is something special, such a nice person. And, uh, you know, like to be happy, you know, to be proud and happy to be, to be part of the Laver Cup and to see Rod, you know, once in a while, to, to see him and talk to him is, is such a nice thing. 
Bjorn, uh, we can't thank you enough. This has been just absolutely uh, wonderful. Uh, it's the sixth edition of the Labor Cup. You've been in involved in all of them. And again, we can't thank you. Thank you enough. Welcome to our city. Thank you very much. Thank you.